to where the U.S. dollar reached a 13-year high yesterday, driven up by rising U.S. bond yields and analysts' expectation of a fiscal stimulus under the Trump administration. administration. CNBC's Louisa Boyson joins us now live from London. Louisa, I'm thinking to myself, drop everything and head to London because I'm going to get a great deal right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're happy to take you, happy to take your money, especially with uh, Brexit right around the corner, right? You never know what's to come from this end. But it is the perfect dollar soup that we have at the moment. We've seen this massive run up uh, in the U.S. currency here over the last couple of weeks. And, and, and especially also after the Trump win, we've seen this continuing. Some people had repositioned themselves a bit to be a bit more dollar neutral heading into the actual election. But afterwards, though, the feeling is that inflation is going to continue to drive higher. And that is really helping the dollar uh, along as well. It has fallen back a little bit in early trade today and I have to say we have two whole months to go before the actual inauguration so can we continue to push higher for the next two months some are saying money has to come out of the dollar trade again and also the Fed fund futures now are fully pricing in a rate hike we're looking at somewhere in the region of 85 to 90 percent already being priced in of a December rate hike to come so therefore also a lot of it might already be priced in to that dollar rally that has been seen of course Janet Yellen will be speaking a little bit later today uh, the head of the Fed speculation is that she might be looking to talk the dollar down a little bit. She could express some concerns about the pace with which we've seen this dollar rise happening and also all the tightening that you already alluded to that already has happened, namely in the form of these yields in the bond markets already having uh, moved up substantially. So we could be uh, listening to some interesting topics from Yellen here later on today, Ali. Louisa, talk to me about uh, the TPP. Even President Obama has sort of said there's no, there's no way forward for this. Essentially, it's dead. But it involves a lot of other countries and a, a number of those Asian countries have already started to go into damage control mode coming up with their own solutions? And you can understand why. I mean, it's taken such a long time to get anything on the table with regards to a really big, massive trade deal as the TPP is. And now what we're hearing is, well, A, Trump is meeting with uh, the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe today, and for sure they're going to be talking about PPP, uh, P, uh, TPP, rather, uh, Japan being the, the, the last nation to, to go ahead and sign on with the TPP. Mr. Abe earlier saying that the TPP is in a difficult situation. And then at the same time, you also, of course, have Australia now looking to back the the broader plans coming out of China uh, in pushing for an even bigger Asian trade deal of sorts. Uh, the Australian trade minister, a gentleman by the name of Stephen Kyobo, he is stated as saying that this will be a new agreement uh, among 16 Asian and Pacific countries and it excludes oh. the U.S. So there's also a separate proposal to that called the free trade area of the Asia Pacific. So they definitely are looking at other options to TPP, Ali. Louisa, good to talk to you. Uh, get a list of restaurants ready for me when I uh, when I get to London. Louisa Boyce and Forrest at CNBC in it. London. Uh